Well, what happened? Nikita Mazepin has been dropped from the Haas Formula 1 team, just like I expected. Here's what Nikita had to say about it in his statement. Dear fans and followers, I'm very disappointed to hear that my F1 contract has been terminated. While I understand the difficulties, the ruling from the FIA, plus my ongoing willingness to accept the conditions proposed in order to continue, were completely ignored and no process was followed in the unilateral step. To those who've tried to understand, my eternal thanks. I've treasured my time in F1 and genuinely hope we can all be together again in better times. I will have more to say in the coming days, Nikita. Now, in my opinion, the way he said he was completely ignored is a bit of a stupid thing to say. It's not his decision, and he has to be considerate of Haas and the other sponsors who maybe didn't want to be associated with the Russian driver. And this has kind of left a bit of taste in my mouth, I can't lie. Now, Nikita Mazepin is definitely not liked, but I think we also need to take into consideration of, is this the right decision? Now, if this was, I don't know, Daniel Ricciardo or Sebastian Vettel or Landon Norris or another like universally loved driver, would we be feeling the same way? Probably not. So it's a difficult situation. Now, if we look at Mazepin at face value, what does he actually bring to the team without your alkali and the money? Not much. So what's the point of keeping him? I mean, if he proved that he was a decent driver and it was almost at the pace of Mick in 2021, then maybe Haas could keep him, but he didn't. He didn't prove anything, to be honest, and he doesn't add any value to the team anymore. So what's the point of keeping him? And the fact that that value that he did have was from his father, who was like the right-hand man to Putin or something. I think he's like on the board of directors or something along those lines. Now, do I think it's unfair that he's losing a seat because he doesn't have the funds to pay for it anymore? Well, to be fair, he's an okay driver. I mean, you don't win F2 races if you aren't good. But let's compare that to like 2019 when he came, I think, 18th in F2. That's not very good at all. But I guess he didn't choose to be born into a rich Russian family and be associated with Putin. But I think since he no longer has any value to bring to the Haas F1 team, I don't think he should have the seat. Now, the worst kept secret is that Pietro Fittipaldi will be replacing him. But who is he? And what has he achieved in his junior career? Well, he was born in Miami, Florida, but races under the Brazilian flag, even though he's American. And of course, he's the grandson of the world champion, Emerson Fittipaldi. He actually surprisingly didn't start his career in karting like every other driver, but rather in the NASCAR and say, Velin, Wellin, Wellin series, before moving to Europe the following year. He competed in British Formula Renault in 2013, and then moved to the Pro Tire Formula Renault Championship and won it in 2014. Then the following year, he moved to the generically named FIA European Championship. He finished 16th, but to be fair, the competition was pretty tough. He was behind the likes of Charles Leclerc, Alex Albon and George Russell and Callum Eilat. Later that year though, he actually won the MRF Formula 2000 Championship and in 2017 competed in the World Series Formula V85 Championship, although his junior career has nothing that impressive, let's be honest. Then in 2018 he became Haas's reserve and test driver, probably because of his surname. I mean if your parents or even grandparents did well in F1, you're probably going to get a seat, let's be honest. So yeah, he was Haas's reserve and test driver and obviously filled in for Romain Grosjean in 2020 when he had his horrific crash in Bahrain. And how did Pietro do? Not too great. I mean, he finished last in both races, but let's be honest, that Haas car wasn't that competitive. Now, is Pietro Fittipaldi a good long-term solution for Haas? Probably not. As I said in this video here, I think the team should probably go for an experienced driver so they can have some stability over the next couple of years. And I think that driver should be Nico Hulkenberg. I just hope Haas can somewhat recover from this, even though they don't have any backing now from Euralkali. Okay, I also want to briefly talk about what I mean by value, because I know I've said it loads this video, but here's what I think. There are three types of drivers in F1. You have your experienced drivers like Fernando Alonso, Lewis Hamilton, and Valtteri Bottas. These guys provide stability in the driver lineup and they're able to give feedback from their experience to help develop the car. Then you have your potential drivers. These guys obviously hide for their potential, like George Russell is for Mercedes, Yuki Tsunoda is for Red Bull and Mick Schumacher is for Ferrari. They're hoping that they will do amazingly one. Then you have your pay drivers like Nicholas Satifi, Guan Yu Zhou and Nikita Mazepin. Each of these drivers bring value. For example, Fernando has been in F1 for almost 20 years. You can't buy experience. Then you have George Russell, who has the potential and the ability to go for wins. And then there's Latifi, who's able to bring in money to pay for jobs and keep people out of unemployment. But if Latifi lost his money, then he'd lose his value to the team. And that's what's happening to Nikita Maspin. He doesn't have any value. I also just want to say this. I know I said I don't like to get political, but I think it's important to say. To the people who say we should remove politics from F1 and sport in general, I just have to say that's such a naive thing to say. I mean, politics fuels F1. I mean, they go hand in hand. Look at the 2021 season without politics. Just a bit of wheel to wheel racing. Politics makes F1 exciting. It's why people love it. Heck, there's an entire TV show about the politics of F1. And then there's also people who say we should ban like the American Grand Prix and stuff because of the war crimes that America committed in like Iraq. Now, I'm not saying that what they did was good. But I'm also saying every country in the world has pretty much been at war. I mean, you might as well ban all British drivers because of the, I don't know, the British Empire in like the 1700s or 1800s, whatever it was. I mean, it's just not a sustainable thing to do. We just have to sometimes live with it. I mean, obviously there's like Saudi Arabia and Abu Dhabi and Qatar. They obviously have a bit of a crisis there right now. But like Lewis Hamilton said, 
cash is king in F1. F1 is a business, and we just have to accept these things about it. Anyway, that's rant over, I'm sorry. Now, if you have enjoyed the video this far, please do consider subscribing. It's free, only takes a few seconds, and you can always unsubscribe later if you want. We are so close to 6,000 subscribers. Please hit that sub button and join this amazing F1 community. We'd love to have you here. So yeah, that's about it. I'm sorry about the little politics rant at the end there. I just want to clear everything up. And yeah, that's a little bit about PH Fittipaldi. So like, thank you for watching. I've been Connor, and I'll see you later. Bye.